Hello everyone and welcome to the conclusion of the X-Plane 12 vs Flight Simulator 2020 series. In this final episode, we will take into consideration all of what we've seen between the sims and make a decision based on those observations as to which sim is the best to buy as an at-home sim user. From graphics and performance, to sound design, weather, flight planning, and most importantly, the feel of each simulator and how aerodynamic and ground forces are translated to you as the virtual aviator, each sim has their strengths and weaknesses and how each of these are accomplished. Which is the overall best? Well, for me, it was a pretty easy decision. I surprised even myself with this one, but there is no doubt in my mind that Flight Simulator 2020, as it sits today, is by far the better option out of the box. From weather design, cloud rendering, and overall better graphics. But for me, the real seller is the built-in flight planner that lets you click anywhere on the globe as a point of arrival and departure. The visual flight planner that changes both routing and ET as you switch your destination, cruise altitude, and whether you're flying direct or via airways as an IFR aircraft. In addition to this, the add-on and modding community has really taken point with this sim to not only patch out a lot of the gaps that Asobo's left in the sim, but to make some of the best freeware as well as payware mods that have ever existed in the flight sim community. Now that's not to say that the third party community won't step up to the plate and make some amazing mods for X-Plane 12, but overall I feel like X-Plane 12 is X-Plane 11 with a fresh coat of paint and a few new aircraft added to their age fleet that dates back to X-Plane 9. The variation in quality for textures, lighting, and even flight dynamics really shows when you go from the Citation 10 or A330 that are new to the sim, and then step into an older aircraft from an older version, like the MD-82. Now the sim is still in early access, so things like cockpit uh, rendering that we saw in our earlier video will hopefully soon be ironed out. Now as these episodes have rolled out, I have been reading through the comments, and there was one that really, really stuck out to me. It was left by Confused Ad, and it reads, X-Plane is the VHS of flight sims. Too little, too late. Sad, but on the consumer side, it's over. And this one really echoed with me, especially on the consumer side line. I think that is generally where the sims separate. Odds are anyone watching this video is a consumer, from couch surfers playing flight sim on their Xbox, to the diehard enthusiasts with a full cockpit in their home's basement or garage. We all fall in that consumer category. Now I absolutely love Laminar Research and their efforts, but I really think their realm is in the commercial space. Think large scale virtual flight training, Redbird motion sims or frascas, or maybe even FAA certified commercial training simulators. Let me put it this way. I have completely rebuilt my computer over the life cycle of Flight Simulator, and I still experience hangups, crashes to desktop, or graphical errors occasionally when playing Flight Sim. Many of my friends and coworkers have similar issues. These of course could be in part to third-party add-ons that we run, but I've experienced many of these issues since playing the vanilla sim. With time and tweaking, I was able to work out many of them, but in the commercial world, there's no allowable downtime to chase bugs and glitches. In contrast to this, X-Plane just seems to work. You open it up, set your flight, and it runs with minimal issues. This is what commercial trainers are looking for. Even when looking at a multi-million dollar BD level full flight simulator, the rendered graphics outside of the cockpit windows is, in my opinion, at a lower level than Flight Simulator 2020 in most cases. For these large-scale commercial sims, the focus is not on the looks, but on the feel and handling of the aircraft. One great mark for Asoba are the sim updates with free detail scenery and avionics add-ons, as well as landing challenges and discovery flights for those of you who enjoy them, that they release on a regular basis. In fact, the much-anticipated Sim Update 10 is in the pipeline with an estimated release of sometime next week. Flight Simulator 2020 has also done some revolutionary work in the multiplayer realm. Players across the world on both PC and Xbox Series X and S consoles can connect and fly with each other seamlessly and with ease. There's no plugins, no third-party add-ons required. And in addition to this, the VATSIM community has further expanded ATC and flight planning realism with connecting real people to each other while using real ATC controllers at various centers and control towers across the world. The immersion factor when flying in VATSIM, in any sim, is second to none. Now there's no doubt in my mind that VATSIM will make its way to X-Plane 12, but as of today, September 17th, 2022, there is no such support. Again, X-Plane is still in early access. 
Most of my leisure and VFR flying will be done in Flight Sim 2020, and I'll keep the more technical IFR and complex approaches to X-Plane 12. The thing to keep in mind here is that competition breeds improvement. No matter which sim you prefer, the competition that exists for it will still push developers to make consistent improvements to their sim. Regardless, those are my thoughts on the two sims as they stand today, and I'm very excited to see where each of these sims go as time elapses and the sims evolve. Which sims do you guys prefer? Anyway guys, that's going to do it for this video and this series. This is Sample Halo signing off. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, take it easy.